starting off wait where's our where's our chat our chat is missing hold on here starting off with wolverine issue number one the momoko second print virgin variant one in 25 that is out this week which is a killer killer book okay Uh, so you guys are going to look at this and be like hold on this is on the almost 10 um yeah so you i i I really wish i could have uh went to uh nycc but you're gonna see some books on the almost 10 that would normally be on the regular list but didn't make it uh didn't make it this week because of nycc but we it was these anyway, was right? Book, well, I'll say this. I think that the next two Peach Momoko books that we're going to show are two of her best books that have come out recently. Let me fix this chat thing that's not working here. Hold on. This is uh, weird. Um, yeah, while you're doing this, it's uh, a okay. bottom of the 10th. Dodgers down 3-2. Bases loaded, two outs. Ooh. Wow. Uh oh. Oh my gosh. Freddie Freeman just hit a grand slam. Oh my lord. No way. Oh my gosh. He crushed it. Walk off grand slam. Whoa. Whoa. Look at him going nuts, dude. Oh, what a game. October baseball, baby. Is that Cortez? Is that Nestor Cortez? Oh, Oh, dude. Bro. October. Freaking baseball. Wow. That is awesome. You gotta love that. You had a triple earlier, man. Too, Ye, did man. you did you have a game on? No, I just I just jumped in. Just like 12 seconds ago, Freeman with a walk-off grand slam. Are you serious? Yeah. Is that Yay. the first walk-off grand slam in World Series history? Shout out to that person that got that out of five, Freddie Freeman for my tops update. Chrome Sapphire break back in the day. <laughs> Man, that's awesome. Wow. I got a Freddie Freeman Dodgers uh, logo variant from Tops this year. I I, imagine the guy that served up the Grand Slam, Brian. Like, he didn't even need to warm up before getting out there to the uh, to, to the pitcher's mound, bro. He didn't even need to warm up. Oh wow, gosh. what a Richie's great bro. game. Richie, what a, Richie's probably going crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I oh, can't wait yeah. to see him jump off. <laughs> yeah. It's it's weird to root for a te- for one or two teams that you usually hate. You know what I mean? I so both. I know. I hate, yeah. I hate both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Peach Momoko, Wolverine variant. Oh, thanks, John. I, I think this is a decent peach momoko cover the only thing i don't like about it is the claws the claws are really off but everything else i really like i like the wolves i like the uh, the way wolverine looks um great question i hope not (laughs) like where's the blood where's the blood coming from yeah is he just wailing on a wolf dude it's the most metal cover ever it's raining blood (laughs) (laughs) mike washburn said brings up the uh 335 uk wolverine and yeah we've talked about that book uh many moons ago um on uh flip side i believe uh one of the one of the shows back in the day the uk uh book that's got the early wolverine first first wolverine in it first wolverine in it type thing you guys know remember what i'm talking about one of those weird uh magazine almost style books that also had a lot of really cool alan moore stuff in it that being said moving on to the next book on the almost 10 this one's selling for 50 to 60 another momoko which is fire the Space Usagi White Star Rising number one, Momoko one in 10 is great. Yeah, this one just came out this week as well. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, this hurts that I need it for my Usagi Peach <laughs> collection. Oh, this one's going to be cheap though. It's only $30. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Those um, other ones I, were quite expensive. Can, so, so it was like 20 to 5 to $30 sales, but some of the ones that I, um, saw listed were like 75 
So oh wow. <laughs> so I missed yeah. my window. So I gotta wait for it for buy the dip. Buy the dip. Gotcha. You got it. Yep. Yeah, so, or, or fake sale it, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just wait a year because that, that that that's about the time for Usagi stuff to go down. Yeah. Or people forget. <laughs> yep. That's true. Yep. I love this though. Really good. It just again, Momoko, when she's on, she's great. But she's very rarely it, on in my taste of her art, you know. So I, I think it's like, um, like when when it matches, right? Her yeah. style. Uh, when she gets paired up with, like, instead of just like com- some random complete book, like when she's in her element, it is you know, the sky's the limit, right? Yep. I agree. But then, like. I feel like it's like within her art too, right? That if she didn't fill the project, she just kind of throws something up there. Yeah. Or she's, you know, tired of Rest drawing. Yeah, yeah. Because she draws 10 covers a month, you know, or she's tired of people fighting over her drawings. Anyways, yeah. uh, that being said, $30 and $30 plus, I guess we could say. And I think this one is going to be easy to pick up in a couple months. So I'll be on the lookout. All right, moving on. Next, Absolute Wonder Woman, number one, the Jim Lee Black and White Virgin 1 in 100 is awesome. Jim Lee and Scott Williams. So you still have the Scott Williams inks. But I'm going to be very honest. I am so surprised about the Wonder Woman, Absolute Wonder Woman secondary market sales. I'm very surprised. Like, why is it selling? Why isn't it selling? I'm going to, I don't mean to, you know, ruin what's coming, but the Decal one in 50, the Pinosian one in 25. I mean, they're selling, but the Pinosian selling for about 30. It's selling over ratio. Um, it's, this, one's, it's, this one's selling above ratio. Uh, I think even just the A cover is selling for like ten bucks or something like that. Is is like DC kind of like doing like Marvel did, where they started doing Ultimate everything, and now they're doing Absolute everything. Is that what they're doing, dude? Parity with those two with Marvel and DC is constant, and that's exactly right. They Marvel brought back the Ultimate Universe. DC is going to do their version of the ultimate universe. You know what I mean? Marvel did the zombie stuff. DC does deceased. Marvel does blood hunt. DC does DC vampires. You know, it's like. It's spy versus spy uh with publishing companies. It's Uh fun to watch. I like it. (laughs) Yeah. But I got to tell you, did you read that? Did you happen to get a chance to read this at all, Stein? I mean, come on. I know. Okay. <laughs> Do you really think I would have picked up a book that came out this week? No, but I'll tell you what. It was it was decent. It was decent. It was the the what I will say that I really like when a book when I really like a book it's got to have certain things for me. One, obviously the story's got to be good. The layout of the art and the panels have got to have some, you know, cool aspects to it. Perfect example of that is that Doom book. You know, we geeked out over the panels of Sanford Green's, you know, layouts and how great they were. And I think the layouts in Absolute Wonder Woman were really good too. The layouts in Batman were really good. So, and then, of course, you have the collectability of the covers too. I know there's a ton of these. There's going to be a ton of the 1 in 25s and the 1 in 50s. But still, they're still collectible and they're good. The Pinosian is probably cover of the year, if not, you know, top three. Uh, the Decal is great. They're getting ready to do a Decal foil version of that. They should have just done a foil to begin with, but I get it. So it's interesting. We'll see how it plays out. But do you think it's like the situation where store like retailers were somewhat pre- prepared for this? And so what we're seeing is that first wave of stock disappearing 
and then we'll see that bump go up again like when people like you know have less supply and you know there's still that demand right obviously mm-hmm. if it's going to a second print yeah we'll see i hope so yeah shout out mighty mel v all right here we go moving on lilith number one the nycc sean gordon murphy variant from vault studios which i mean as soon as we saw this we knew this was going to be a hit and uh it's selling for 75 plus now so not a bad book or cover i don't know about the book itself so Uh, it's it's pretty uh it's a pretty gory cover that's what i'm talking about look at that cat too wow oh uh and anyone that used the link on on uh modern comic mayhem check your emails because they'll ask you if you want to ship it because that was a that was a pickup only but they have leftovers apparently so of this can, book of this book so you can get it shipped so if you ordered it off their website uh they will ship it to you so you just have to answer an email from whatever you ordered from just saying i'll repeat it on saturday too not nice. bad dude yeah so it, for those what 90 people that jumped in onto it or mm-hmm. whatever yeah because it was like it said like 126 in stock and it went down to like 60 something by the end of the night oops <laughs> well i haven't gotten an email for them saying that they're gonna ship it or anything but i got an email email saying confirmed just nothing from them about you know yeah because i asked about it because i noticed that it was a, a pickup only but i guess they're just going through everyone's order that did that that didn't pick it up at the con oh that's good yeah so at least they're reaching out so be on the lookout you- for that or you can you can ask about it on your uh on send them an email mm-hmm. for those who do go to like some of these bigger cons which i've never been to nycc i've never been to stcc Mm-hmm. Like, if you're if you're trying to buy an exclusive variant, what would be your preferred way of distributing distribution of said book? Uh, I won't say the store that does it, but I know there's a store that you know, if they have a limited to whatever, they allocate each one per day or you know so many per day so if they sell out during that day you know so everyone that goes each day has a chance to get the to get the book would you think would you be like upset if it were a lottery type system no no like like let's say let's say you know like this one's limited to 300 yeah, so like you basically, if you come up to the table and you buy something else, you can reach into this big thing, pull out a number. If it's if it's you know whatever it is, if it's a winning ticket, then you can buy X bu- X book or something like that. Yeah, I mean, would, you hate, okay that. would you hate an idea like that? No, I mean i I hate the idea that I have to buy something to grab a ticket. What if you didn't have to buy something? What if you could just walk up? But but then I'm the only reason I say that is because I feel like somebody would just take a take one, and then they would just keep coming back to the table over and over until they had all the the yeah. options or basically all the things. Because how would you know? I mean, there's especially if it's you know like if you had a Campbell book or something like that, like you wouldn't. There'd be so many people standing there, you wouldn't you wouldn't remember anybody. Oh yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I mean, not, not like I'm ever going to set up at a show or anything like that, but, but I'm just trying to think. Stamp their like, badge. Stamp their badge. <laughs> can, can you do that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how a lot of the toy, like if you go to like Star Wars Celebration, they do that with for, for exclusive oh. for toys. So, yeah. you know, I mean, that's what they do, do for, for the shoes. Funko Blues, Hasbro, you do uh, a full locker. Yeah. Yeah. So why wouldn't so why did the why so if they do that for toys and shoes and all that other stuff, why don't they do that for comics? I don't know. That's a great question. 
because now you just got a b- bunch of mad comic buyers. That doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense. Because you have a because comics is like the rogue, like you know, system out of it all, right? Like no two stores like release similar exclusives or in the same manner, right? Yeah. Man, there's just got to be of. a better. There's a better way. We're we're gonna figure out a better way. We're gonna figure yeah. it out. Just pre-sell online and then have people pick them up. And if they can't make it, ship it. (laughs) (laughs) Then it then it doesn't really like invite anybody to actually go, right? (laughs) I mean, isn't like the whole reason that you do these things is to get people to come to your booth to buy other things, right? Yes. Exactly. (sighs) It's it's a tough situation all around, you know. Um it's the the hobby has changed so much since the days when you go to a con and they would hand you a bag when you walked in and all your variants were in there, you know. So true. <laughs> it is what it is. But seventy five plus for this. We'll see if they ship them out to the people that uh, order them online, and that'll be interesting. One to, to find three out. weeks. One to three weeks. There you go. All right. Moving on, we have w- my favorite book of the year so far. <laughs> uh grommets number five the brett parson one in ten variant which is awesome and it is selling for uh thirty dollars on the secondary market came out this week also is uh never mind i was gonna say something and it just it just clicked in my i was gonna say something really stupid i i initially thought that this was the dude the actor from uh Big Bang Theory. That's oh, not yeah. Brett Parsons. That's yeah. Jim, that's Jim, Jim Parsons. Parsons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Brian Posehn. Oh, I almost said it, and I'm like, nope, that was dumb. Don't say it. Uh, you you laugh about that, but Brian Posehn, a comedian and actor, is a co-writer on this. So, oh, well, that's weird. Yeah. 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 Uh, I thought you were going to ask, is this a graduate homage? <laughs> <laughs> I would have been. I probably would have been thinking more of uh, like Fast Times at Ridgemont High or something like that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I could see that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah. Uh, Brad Selden says. Be on a diving board, bro. <laughs> diving board. <laughs> Brad Selden says he was in the Sarah Silverman show. He was in Mr. Show with Bob and Dave before that. I remember Mr. Show. That was good, man. My one of my all time favorite. Com- comedies funny, man. man so good so good mr show with bob yeah. and dave yeah david cross and uh bob uh Dude, david cross what's, what's the guy saying? from uh the lawyer series from breaking bad odenkirk oh, um, yeah. bob odenkirk yeah so uh brian posein was in that uh jack black and kyle uh, tenacious d got their start in that the guy who does SpongeBob's voice got his start in that. Um, a ton of people got their start at, with Mr. Show with Bob and Dave. Sarah Silverman, I believe, got her start start there. Uh, yeah, good, good shit. Anyways, love this series. I know it's only a seven issue series, but I hope that they figure out a way to continue it somehow. But man, nostalgia central for us for sure. Hey. Uh, just, just so everybody knows, uh, Mighty Mel V wants to send everybody his love. Everybody on oh. the panel and everybody in the chat. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. All right, moving on. This one's interesting, a, a foreign book. Linus Estate, which stands for L- Linus Summer, I believe, uh, in this foreign uh, I don't I forget where it's from. I'm not Italian maybe. Yeah, Italian. Uh and this is very interesting. It's got a great Charlie Brown cover, but more importantly, in the interior there's a very important book. That being Fantastic Four number 1. Yeah, there's a couple other books in there too. Oh, uh, yeah. cool. But I don't know about you, but I I almost <laughs> I almost put this cover as the blow book because this I don't know what <laughs> Charlie Brown is is wearing there, but that is terrible. 
Like, what is he wearing? What is he wearing? <laughs> it's Pigpen's costume. I, yeah, <laughs> like it doesn't even make sense. I, is that actual Charles Schultz like cover too? It, do, it doesn't look like it. Maybe it, it is, but it kind of looks like a ripoff. But it, at the same time, it could be like a. I bet. You, I bet you it was a nude photo, and they had him scribble over it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you can't be showing Charlie Brown's cock. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> it scribbled over it. <laughs> sorry, bro. <laughs> There's also, uh, I guess, something to do with the World Cup at this time, 1966, uh, where they talk about the World Cup. There's a Dick Tracy uh, <laughs> Dick. comic in it. <laughs> there is. There's a dick in it. <laughs> Some other interesting things in it, like you said, Stein, but here's the back cover. I mean, it's so weird, right? This is yeah. really strange. Look at that Fantastic Four, Ben Grimm. That's awesome. But big sale on it, that's for sure. I, I don't know if it's a big sale. I don't even, I mean, it's 100. It's so for one, what did I say, 170? Yep, 170. I, I mean, I would think that this has to be really rare, right? Yeah. I've never even heard of it. Yes, yeah, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah, especially with grading magazines being more and more common nowadays, too, as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That could be. Hey, Blue Green, do you have this? <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I bought it. <laughs> Probably did. It might be a great price. I don't know. Yeah. It's cool, man. 170 bucks, and it was in really good condition, it looked like, too. So, all right. Moving on. A classic. Spectacular Spider-Man issue 101, The specifically the newsstand. And every time I see this book, it just takes my breath away. It's that good. Damn. Uh, yeah, this one, this one said an all-time... So this one got... So, Koi, if you remember old, old CBSI, uh, yeah, Cortex. yeah, he he was always into this book and he always wanted a 9 8. And there really, at that time, there really weren't any 9 8s, so it was pretty hard to grade. Um, and then more people got it, and you know, the price went up, and then the price kind of came back down. Uh, but this set an all time high in the newsstand for this nine, eight this week. It's so for 900, which the prior all time high, uh, for a new stand was just 700. Dude, I've pressed like five or six of these in the last six or seven subs that I've gotten. It's crazy. Wow. Uh, if you, if you do like this one, the, uh, the, the companion book to this, I think is the alpha flight. Was it alpha flight three or something like mm -hmm. that or four? And I think that one is, not very easy to find in nine eight either. So I feel like there's a spectac uh, another Spider Man book that's similar to that this kind too. of op opposite of that. Yeah. So a lot of cool books that are like this. I still need to go eat at Koi's restaurant in Houston. How have you not? He still because it's on the opposite side of the city, and that's like an hour away. <laughs> I have I've three of my adjusters live in Houston. On my what, team. What part though? Like living in um, Houston could be like the what, other side. That's like what's another the, city. What what's just north of the city? Um like the woodlands or something like wood, that. Yeah, or one lives yeah, one lives up there, one Ivers. lives on the southwest side of the city. Um, so like Sugarland, Missouri City. Uh Richmond, maybe is it Richmond? Oh, Richmond, yeah. Yeah. That's um, all like a whole nother city, like outside of the city of Houston, but like it's within the greater city so so whenever i do come down to do something with them i'll make sure to hit you up okay yeah i live close to the, to richmond okay yeah uh jersey to the base says there's a spider boy homage to this one too so mm. yeah mm. yeah and <laughs> i can't wait for um when Wasn't spider there... boy dies that's gonna be a great comic to get yeah did they do a remaster of this soon. Like, did someone do a remaster of this, like, in a on a modern book? The I remember the black, white, and blood of Rita one kind of reminds us of this, but they could have. They probably did a, a redo of this or something. Yeah. 
But yeah, Derek says the last Mark Jeweler sale of this was twenty five hundred. So yeah, I told you Derek knows everything, man. Yeah, man. All He's right. our fact checker, bro. He like corrects us like every five minutes, dude. <laughs> Moving on it, to is he AI? <laughs> a very interesting and a perfect almost ten book, the Zombie Full World of Oz issue number one, the the Scarecrow variant. And you guys know uh, we've been talking about Kickstarter books pretty heavily lately, and here is a former kickstarter uh that took place and i believe in between in 2019 i think it got fulfilled maybe a year later but really really old school kickstarter and this book i believe was a 30 or 25 dollar buy-in uh it says here limited edition virgin cover and 25 dollars was this book's original buy-in and now it's on the list selling for $95 raw. Yeah, almost a hundred. Um I I think it's it's a it's a pretty cool looking cover. Yeah. I don't I agree. I, I don't hate the cover at all. Yeah, I like it. I like the trade. Um I, I don't know, man. I really love Kickstarter books lately. Isn't there a snake eye cover from G.I. Joe that looks just like that? Probably because it definitely looks like Snake Eyes, but I love yeah. how <laughs> they kind of updated the Oz type thing, you know. Um, as you oh, guys... we're supposed to be like a scarecrow, yeah, because it's all stitched together, yeah. So it says here it's a Victorian steampunk fantasy horror zombie adventure. So there you go. Uh, imagine an alternate reality where Dorothy Gale returned from her adventures in Oz and her family thought she was insane. So they had her committed to a mental institution. Now throw in a whole bunch of zombies. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so man, Kickstarter is a good thing. A crowdfunding is a good thing for comics for sure. And this type of thing is the reason why, in my opinion, cool sounding story, collectability, you know, probably only printed so many of these. So, anyways, $95 from Storm Door Studios Kickstarter. And there's, I believe, I want to say he did seven total Kickstarters, uh, one for each issue, and he's currently got one available for volume two of Zombie Full World. So go check it out on Kickstarter. Uh, he, he, the creator is Eric Hawkins on Kickstarter. So hmm. there is, we go. Is the Wizard of Oz in public domain yet? Probably close. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. Yeah. That was a random question. Well, I was, <laughs> I mean, like, you know, instead of just like making a parody movie and stuff like that, I was you know, yeah, he's got ideas. He's got ideas. It's a it's a song he's got in his head. <laughs> I got to give a big shout out to Billy Tucci. We geeked out over his uh, Halloween uh, she variants that he did recently. But I was listening to his show today or yesterday, and he was talking about he's doing a special thing where Brian Polito, I believe, gave him the okay to util use Lady Death in one of his com one of his stories. And he's doing a story where it's a bunch of public domain characters along with she and Lady Death. And he's utilizing those public domain characters, you know, to do a cool comic book, like a one shot comic book. So that's very oh, interesting nice. to me. Yeah. Yep. Shout out Billy Tucci and Crusade Comics. All right. Moving on. A perfect McClay book that Stein. I knew, I knew as soon as he saw this, he probably thought, oh, that's a McClay book. Yeah. Voices in My Head, issue number one, the Tim Bradstreet, one in 10, from a year ago. Um, and what a great title, too. That's, geez. No, this just that. came out this week. Oh, just came out this week? Oh, yeah, it just came out this week. You're right. Wow. Yeah, this is brand new. 
I gotta find but one yeah. of these. But yeah, I saw it and I was like, "Ooh, I wonder if uh, this has got to be like on McClay's want list." Oh mm-hmm. yeah, it is now. <laughs> I did not <laughs> see this. He's going on a hunt now, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, twenty-five to thirty, so not bad. Um, again, if on a regular week, this probably would have made the regular list. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I saw the uh, October 23rd, and that's what made me, I think, see, think 2023, but I'm catching shit from Liger style. He's like, oh, come on, Brian, get with it. Cannabis, brother. <laughs> Cannabis. Anyways. It's uh, what I happens just, when you shorthand read, you know? Yeah. I just pulled out the Why the Last Man J.G. Jones cover that's kind of like this out of my PC box the other day. Uh, it reminds me a lot of this. I love astronauts and skulls, so perfect. Reminds me of Jeremy Geddes artwork, too. Anyways, moving on. Green Lantern, issue number 18. The newsstand, which is so rare that even cover price doesn't have this listed. So shout out to Matt DeVoe and crew over there. Update uh, Green Lantern 18 because there is a newsstand for it. And it sounds like it's super rare. Um. Yeah, so this is like a. This reminds me of the Superman cover where, um, she's stepping on Superman. Yep. Star Sap- Star Sapphire or whatever. This is an homage um, to it. Yeah. I think so. Um. Yeah, seventy dollars. I don't think there's. Is there anything other than just this being a newsstand? Is there anything else? Not like, that I can think of in this book. Other than. Her getting the uh, whatever they call the Star Sapphire crew, you know, and she became one of those. Um, yeah, that's all I could think of. Such a hmm. great cover. Um, I, I don't know about I don't know about the and I think we've all been doing that. Is you know, if we see any newsstands from this era, like it doesn't even really matter what the what. Well, I mean, it what could book be, it yeah. is or what condition yeah. it's in. Just, <laughs> I because mean, it's a yeah. Just up. pick, yeah. Just pick it up. I mean, I, I mean, I've got so many like X Men, and you know, if it's got a Wolverine cover and it's a newsstand from this era, I mean, you just, just pick it up. I mean, don't even, don't even question it. Yep. Don't try and find it. Don't, don't look. Just, just buy it. Agree. Yeah. That's why I love going to half price books because they don't care. Nope. And then and then you can find new sands all day in there. Mm-hmm. Like I literally went in there one day. I had a pile of like Wolverines. And I was just like kind of like, okay, Wolverine new sand modern books that mm-hmm. like no one wants. Okay, I'll take them. <laughs> yeah. People yeah. are stupid, man. You know, just leaving that stuff. Yeah. You know. <laughs> stupid. They don't know. It's stupid. <laughs> I'm just playing. Uh, <laughs> moving on. No, I'm not. <laughs> for our final almost 10 book this week in a heavy New York Comic Con show list Universal Monsters Frankenstein issue number one the Dan Quintana New York Comic Con Virgin limited to 500 and this was given out a very interesting way kind of like you talked about Stein did you hear how the, there was only one way to get this book did you hear how to get it I did not so the uh, retailer that sold this book was put them in their quote unquote mystery boxes um, that they did of of just I guess it was just their stuff, and they would not allow people to buy it itself. They even turned down our boy Mighty Mel V, who said, "Yeah, come on, man, get me one of those. Let me buy one of those by itself." And they said, "Sorry, man, we can't." So. <laughs> There, here's another perfect example of it, you know, a little bit of integrity. I, I know people are going to complain, oh, they're selling mystery boxes, but as Stein packs are a perfect example, not all mystery packs and mystery boxes are bad things. And to have a little integrity and say, sorry, I know you're an influencer, or you're a friend, or this and that, we're we can't give you one. We the only way you can get it is to buy a mystery box. And get lucky. Yeah. Yep. So it's a pretty sick cover. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it sounds like Igor said uh, over 30 exclusives in their packs and a lot of super rare books inside, some as limited as low as 50. So not too bad. Hmm. And yeah, this is a nice prize, Eugene. Beautiful cover. 